Do you think that Tupac was being reckless and irresponsible that night in Las Vegas, despite the fact that he was out of jail on a $1.4 million appeal bond? They never really talk about this. Let's get into some of this straight game. It's not what you dealt with, but how you play it. Remember they used to laugh at a brother. Welcome back, guys. Welcome back. It's your boy Delray Richardson, Platinum Artist, Platinum Songwriter, Straight Game TV. I thank you for tuning in. I appreciate your time. Do me a favor. Hit the thumbs up button notification. Also, subscribe to the channel. And like I always say, if you want to be one of the first people notified when I drop some of this straight game, please do me a favor and click on what appears to be that little bell notification right below this video. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I want to, you know, put you up on game about something in regards to Tupac and, and the whole situation in regarding what Tupac would want or what he wouldn't want, right? Um, there was a statement made by Napoleon. Like I said, I respect the brother Napoleon. Um, in regards to saying, you know, and, and it's his right and his opinion to say it. Um, but I just have a, a, a difference of an, an opinion in regards to that. Um, Napoleon said that Tupac wouldn't want Keefe D uh, in jail or arrested if Tupac were alive. Right? And let me delve into that. Uh, because... Number one, the reality of the situation is, when we talk about that, as we see it right now, it wouldn't even be up to Tupac whether he would want him, uh, Keefe D, arrested or in jail or not, right? Based on the fact that we have a nation of laws and things of that nature where if you commit a crime or if you do something, right? then you should be and will be, if the law is carried out like it's supposed to be, punished for that crime, right? So it wouldn't be up to Tupac whether Keefe D would be arrested or put in jail. It would be based on the law and the, uh, the, the applying the law accordingly for what the person has done wrong, if you will. Unfortunately, we know that at the time, you know, immediately after Tupac's death, it seems as if nobody really wanted to um, investigate the case. That was the, the optics of it. That's how it appeared to be, right? Um, but so when Napoleon said that, I understand what he was saying based on his interaction with Tupac, how Tupac saw things and both you know, dealing with the street aspect of, of how it would appear to be, um, you know, if Tupac had to cooperate with the police, Tupac probably wouldn't have cooperated with the police. But but let me give you the flip side to that. Um, Tupac, on the other hand, I would think at that particular time wouldn't wouldn't even have uh, from from that point on. He wouldn't if, if he, let's say if he had survived, right? Tupac wouldn't even have wanted to be dealing with death row as he was already on his way out, as we know that he wasn't really signed to death row, right? So he was on his way out. I think that would have been the turning point. And he would have that probably that next day he probably would have had a reflection and said, you know what? You know, what the hell am I doing? You know. And then not only that, a lot of people forget. Tupac was on probation. Suge Knight went to jail for violation of probation for that very situation that they were involved in in Vegas. And, and uh, you know, by all accounts, uh, Suge was either grazed by a bullet, glass, or whatever. There's many different stories going behind that. But Suge went to prison. And you know, have a lot of people saying, well, you know, I don't think Tupac would have went to prison. And no, you got to understand Tupac was on an appeal bond. That's different just than just regular bail, right? All you got to be um, 
all that has to happen is you be brung back in front of that judge for uh, uh, something that involves violence. You're going back to jail. I don't really think people really understand that. And so there are a lot of um, other determining factors that would creep into whether Tupac would want, um, you know, Keefe D to be arrested or in jail and, and dealing with that the street situation and so on and so forth. Another thing, that situation involving that, that Vegas situation didn't any, have anything to do with Tupac. And then I think I think once he would have realized, like, you know what, this was over a gold chain. This wasn't about anything that I'm truly loyal to. And I think probably his mother or some other family members would have talked to him. Um, you got Watani. Uh, to him, but I think they would have came and they would have, you know, pulled his coattail like, man, what are you doing? You know what I mean? You didn't you didn't go through all that you just went through involving the case in New York and then to be having to deal with this craziness. Right. Right. Excuse me. Right. And so I think that there are a lot of other factors to just when you look at it from a reality standpoint that would have had to have taken place before Tupac could even had considered, you know, um, whether he would want Keefe D put in jail or not. And and the number one uh, reason is that Tupac would have had to survive. He would have had to have survived, you know, the, the you know, the gunshots and, and all of that in regards to even thinking about what that would be. But the reality of it is, as it stands right now, Tupac, it would have been, he, he wouldn't have been able to say whether um, he would want Keefe D arrested or not, you know, or put in jail or not, you know. And so, and we understand how Tupac felt about, like, you know, you know, snitching and, and, and all of those things, uh, dealing with the Haitian Jack situation after that came about, you know, he put it in his song. But, you know, most people forget that even when, after the fact, let's be clear, after the fact, Tupac, um, in the, um, in, in the tape, in, in, in the, uh, his last interview, he basically stated, you know, who the guns belong to in the Biggie in the Biggie situation when they came up to his hotel rooms. Now, you know, that wasn't snitching, if you will. That was just being factual in regards to what it was and how he had took those charges and when put under the pressure, right? Uh, he didn't say anything. He took the charges because he knew that the guns didn't belong to them, belong to him. But he also did not tell who the guns belonged to. So that was just the type of guy uh, that Tupac was. And I think Napoleon was coming from that perspective, you know, um, like I said, because Tupac was just that type of guy. He, he wasn't the type to, to dime nobody out. But like I said, in, in relation to the KPD situation, you know, it wouldn't have been up to Tupac. It wouldn't have been up to Tupac whether Tupac wanted KPD arrested or Orlando Anderson arrested at that particular time because there was a crime that had been committed, you know, even for the fact of, you know, Suge Knight going to jail for the violation of probation. You know, I don't think, you know, nobody, you know, would want Suge to go to jail for violation of probation under those circumstances. But once again, the responsibility of you handling your business and knowing what your situation is, is your responsibility. Just like it was Tupac's responsibility, um, when, you know, he decided to go and join that situation up with Orlando Anderson, knowing, being conscious of the fact that he was on an appeal bond. So what it tells me is this Tupac was out of control. It was like, yo, what, what you know what I mean? What, what was, what was he thinking? You know, um, they had just denied him bail, you know, um, the appeals court, you know, they, they, they tried it in front of the appeals court. The appeals court granted him, you know, a bail. You know, they put up the money. They had him sign a, um, a uh, power of attorney agreement to get out of jail. Like, all of these hoops. And then all of a sudden, you know, one night in Vegas, over, you know, what Frank Alexander said, somebody whispering to his ear saying, yeah, that, that's the guy right there that tried to, you know, you know, snatch the chain, the death row chain and all of that. He goes and involves himself in a situation that – potentially at that time before he knew he was going to get shot that could send him back to prison. It just didn't make any sense. 
it just didn't make any sense. And so, you know, you know, that's my, my, my take on that. Like I said, um, I think that, uh, yeah, it wouldn't have been up to Tupac. It, it wouldn't have been up to Tupac, just like it wasn't up to Suge, you know, um, whether he would be sent back to jail. It was based on Suge's actions and already being on uh, probation or parole. Uh, that was the determination that he would be sent back to prison and what would ultimately happen. You know what I mean? Um, and so, yeah, that's my take on that. So I, I don't think Tupac would have had the, you know, it wouldn't have been in his, you know, whether he said, okay, you know, um, from what Napoleon said, you know, Pac wouldn't want KPD in jail. I really can't say that. I can say that at the end of the day, it wouldn't be what Tupac wanted. You know, if KPD wanted to stay out of the jail, he would have kept his mouth shut. I think that was totally up to Keefe D, like it was up to Suge Knight, like it was up to Tupac Shakur. One must be accountable for their actions when they do things, you know, outside of what they're supposed to be doing at that particular time. You know, it's always think before you act, you know? You know, chime in and tell me what you guys think from a, from a realistic standpoint. Your boy Del, right? Straight gang.